I'm afraid that we have a somewhat serious problem. Oh? Or rather, one of our branch officers has. Now, would it be possible for you to come out here and uh, look into it? I don't see why not. What sort of a problem, Mr. Hawkins? Well, you see, we've had a series of fires, Mr. Dollar, out in Simi Valley. Mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, north of here and just beyond the San Fernando Valley. Yes, and you think maybe some fire bugs at work? Oh, I do, sir. I definitely do. But until it is proven, uh, well, if you are free to come out and make an investigation for us, I hardly need tell you that we'll be glad to pay all your expenses. Plus my usual fee. Of course. Uh, you know what? Uh, fee, did you say? That's right. Well, now, now, just... Now, don't worry about it, Mr. Harkins. We can decide on the amount of it after we see how much there is for me to do out no, there. No, but in order to justify a fee, Mr. Dollar... And just how much of my time it'll take. Now, hold on here, young man. That Needless to be... say, if it turns out I'm able to save your company any actual money, I'll expect my usual commission. Now, look here, sir. Yes. Mr. Dollar. Yes? Well, Mr. Harkins? Uh, very well. Very well. Good. I'll see you. CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Greater Southwest Insurance Company, Home Office, Los Angeles, California. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the do-it-yourself matter. Expense account item one, six dollars for a cab out to the airport. Item two, 20425, plane fare to New York, and a jet heading west. That east to west time differential is a great thing. It meant that we pulled into the new Los Angeles International Airport shortly after noon Pacific time. Item three, 680 for the long cab ride into the big new Lozier building just east of Beverly Hills on Wilshire Boulevard, where Royal J. Harkins keeps an eagle eye on the affairs of greater Southwest insurance. Now, let us get this understood right now, Mr. Dower, insofar as any fee is concerned. Now, you just stop worrying, Mr. Harkins. Did I ever hit you with a, a bill too big on any of the other jobs I've done for you? Well, no. Not that I haven't tried. I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> now, tell me, what's this all about? A lot of fires, you said. Um, uh, yes, yes. Around the San Fernando Valley. Now, out beyond that, in what is known as the Simi Valley. Mm -hmm. oh, tell me, do you remember hearing or reading about the terrible Bel Air and Topanga Canyon fires last fall? Last November? Oh, sure. Well, according to our eastern papers, it was one of the worst disasters that ever hit Los Angeles County. It certainly was. Over 450 homes were destroyed. And many of them in the uh, fashionable Bel Air section were in the $100,000, $200,000 class. So I understand. Now, many of those homes were owned by wealthy, prominent movie stars and producers and directors. Mansions. And you had a lot of them insured. Oh, yes, we certainly did. In other words, Mr. Dollar... In other words, your company has had to shell out plenty of money. Yes, Mr. Dollar, it has cost us millions. Literally millions. Mm. Now, what has that got to do with your troubles out in the Simi Valley? Dollar, the best way for us to recoup some of our losses, I decided, was to... Well, to simply sell more insurance, more and more insurance. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about the tremendous amount of real estate development that's uh, going on out in the Simi Valley, uh, well, now do you? Well, I understand that all the orange groves and farmland... Orange ranchers, Mr. Dollar. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes with the hundreds of new homes out there, it's opened up a whole new territory for us. Well, I would think so, and for every other insurance company. Yes. So the first thing I did was establish an almost completely autonomous branch office in the community of Moore Park. That's out there in the valley? Uh, yes, just north of Thousand Oaks. I see. How, uh, how autonomous do you mean? I mean full power to immediately settle all claims. At least all except those that might be questionable for one reason or another. 
Uh, they, of course, are referred back here to the main office, to me. Well, isn't that uh, rather unusual, Mr. Hawkins? Well, now, that's one of the best ways. A relatively small company like ours can compete with the big ones by close personal service and the settling of all claims fairly and immediately. Mm. Now, I guess you have a point there. No question of it. And, uh, by the way, a young man simply walked in one day, took our course, passed with flying colors. His name is uh, Harry Walterson mm -hmm. and Dulles. He has sold as many policies in the past three months as I ever sold in three years. Well, real go get it. Yes. Yes, he um, certainly is. Now, as a result, the premiums have been rolling in, rolling in, but now, recently... Yes, let's get to those fires you mentioned. Oh, yes. Uh, when you figure nine fires in less than six weeks, plus the personal property losses that went with them, huh, ruinous. At least it gives your young friend Wallace a pretty terrific argument for selling more insurance out there. Yes, of course it does. And uh, under my urging, he's fully capitalizing on it. Every time there's a fire, he's able to sell 10, 15, 20 new policies with no trouble at all. But the premiums on them don't begin to make up for those losses. Now, tell me, have the police found anything to indicate arson? Oh, we have reason to be mighty proud of our police and fire departments out here, Mr. Dollar. But they simply cannot keep up with this burgeoning population growth. There simply aren't enough of them, not enough men or facilities. And uh, to answer your question directly, no, they haven't actually found any concrete evidence of arson. Nor has Walterson, although he suspected it once or twice. I see. And if you know that valley area, uh, will do you? Well, well, with its brush-covered hills and plains, canyons, covered with uh, mesquite, sumac, manzanita, chaparral, all of it tinder dry because of our lack of rainfall. New homes, you said. Oh, yes. Um, are they homes that people are satisfied with after they've moved in and lived there for a while? Oh, you're thinking perhaps the homeowners themselves are set these fires? Well, it's just a possibility, and it has been done before, you know. But, uh, a whole series of them. Well, who else stands to gain? And don't forget this, sir. Yes, yes. An idea like that, if it's gotten away with, can spread pretty quickly. You ask the torch squad in any big city. And if that's the case with these fires... Dollar, you've got to find out. And if it is, put a stop to them before they ruin us. Item four, that usual 50-buck deposit on a rental car. I drove west on Wilshire Boulevard to Sepulveda, north over the Santa Monica Mountains to the valley, west on the Ventura Freeway to Thousand Oaks, and then north to the little town of Moor Park. The Greater Southwest Insurance Office was a spanking new little building of field stone and white stucco with picture windows all around. Inside, there was only a reception desk, half a dozen girls with typewriters and calculating machines, and down at the end, the private office of Harry Wallison, who got right to the point. The homeowners themselves setting these fires? Well, it's a possibility, isn't it? No, sir, Dollar. And I'll tell you why. Uh, excuse me, do you mind if I just close this door? <laughs> no, go right ahead. Yeah, now, maybe we can hear each other now. I ain't guess I'm conditioned to all that racket out there. <laughs> You'd have to be. You have a mighty busy little place here. Well, after all, if I'm going to make any money for the company. But as I started to say... Oh, uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Walterson. Oh, yes, Mr. Pretty. Yes, sir, your policy will be mailed out to you tonight. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did, too. Yes, sir. Yes, that last one scared me, too. But if you talk with Mrs. Hatcher, you know how fast we paid off on that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, they're just part of our regular service. Good boy. Okay, Mr. Pretty, and thank you. Now, let's see, Dollar. I will... Uh... <laughs> Oops, here's another. Walterson. Burton? Oh, yes, yes, of course, Mr. Burton. <laughs> well, fine. Yeah, yeah... Yeah, I think you're very wise. And the increase in premium is only negligible. Of course. Take care of it right away, Mr. Burton, and I thank you. Oh, sorry, Dollar. Sure. Um, Betty, add those two outbuildings to the Burton policy. And listen, 
Just hold any cause for me for a while. Now, now, you said that you don't think that the, uh, the folks themselves could have set any of those fires. Because those are all brand new homes and they're nice ones. Mm -hmm. People, families that go to the trouble and expense of moving into a section like that, they want to stay. Yeah, I would suppose so. And listen, Doc. No policy ever gives complete coverage. You know, because of the personal things, the stuff with sentimental value. Sure. Yet those things have gone up with the rest. And do you think the folks that endanger the lives of their kids? Yet there have been a couple of mighty narrow escapes. One cute little pair of twins that I myself saved. Mm. But most important of all, Dollar, yeah. you don't know the people who got burned out. I do. Sure, there might have been one questionable character among them, like the one who had the first blaze. But the rest? No, sir. I'd stake my bottom dollar on it. What about that first one? Old man Orloff? Mm. Sure, he was a crackpot, Johnny. Uh, you mind if I call you Johnny? No, please. Be my guess. Sure, he hated having so many new people move in around him. But you know what I think started that one? What, Harry? A lot of dead grass and weeds and dried out bushes. And over in the corner of the lot was a pile of broken bottles he'd thrown out. That might have acted like a magnifying lens. Hmm? Yes, sir. County firemen thought so, too. Mm. Or love. But that wouldn't account for the rest of them. Because they all started at night. So somebody, somehow, somebody. And yet, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about the arson angle. Tell me, um, has there been any particular pattern about these fires? Well, I, I don't know exactly what you mean by pattern, Johnny, but they've all had one thing in common. What's that? They've always started on a windy night. And this time of year, we have quite a few of them. Look out the window there. You see the dust beginning to kick up? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, and every time I see it, I start getting worried again. No, I can't say I blame you, Harry. But hey, it's, it's getting dark already. Any plans for dinner, Johnny? Well, I thought I'd better get back to Los Angeles and find myself a hotel for the night. Some real good places to eat out here in the valley. Say, why don't you and I just... Hmm. Now, wait, wait. I better make sure it's okay for me to leave. Betty, any calls, any callbacks I ought to make before I... Huh? What else? Mm -hmm. huh. Go on. Oh, you're kidding. Okay, okay. Well? Sorry, Johnny, but it looks like two or three hours at this telephone for me. Can't let down the clients. Oh, the prospective clients. Right. All right. I'll see you in the morning then, Harry. Good. And uh, believe me, Johnny, if I can be of any help to you. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Walterson. Oh, yes. Yes, Mrs. Duval. Sorry, Johnny. Take it easy, Harry. You'll live longer. Now, how can I help you, Mrs. Duval? Instead of going back to L.A., I grabbed a bite to eat. That's item five at dollar seventy. Then prowled around until I found a county fire chief at his home down in Thousand Oaks. I'm afraid he wasn't much help, though. Well, sure, Dollar. We always look around for signs of arson, too, when there's a string of fires like that. Mm -hmm. but when we don't find a thing, what can we do? And don't forget, until people stop building those little frame houses, until we get some laws with teeth in them, it will make people clean up the brush and old dried-up grass around their places... You know all it takes to start one of those fires? What, Chief? Just one live cigarette tossed out of somebody's car. Mm. I tell you, the American motorist is the worst fire bug ever lived. Afraid I'll have to go along with, with you on that, Chief. All too often it makes them killers, too. Yes, sir. Sure, I agree with you. There's been too many fires in that one section. And with more people coming in all the time and we're ready for, people don't know how to handle this dry, brushy country. By the time we or any other department can get to some of those places, why, it's too late. Fire's done its work. There's nothing left to do but... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Steve Barter. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, want to come along? Come on. Right on cue, Dollar. Another fire. Oh, where? Where else? Up in the Simi Valley. Let's go. Most of us have problems. Business and financial worries, family troubles, or personal difficulties. They can build up strains and tensions that, if improperly controlled, can develop into mental illness, America's number one health problem. 
There are many effective ways of treating mental illness, but the most effective method is to prevent it before it starts. Write for the free booklet, How to Deal with Mental Problems. The address is Box 3000, New York 1, New York. As the chief suspected, by the time we got out to this newest fire up in the Simi Valley, we were too late. Another of the nice new little houses had burned to the ground. The firemen had been able to keep it from spreading to other nearby properties, but that was all. The chief and I both talked to the owner, but he wasn't able to give us the slightest clue as to how the fire had started. And after talking to him, I'd be willing to swear that he had nothing to do with it. Using a hand lamp, I went over not only the remains of the house, but all of the other property too, inch by inch until it was nearly midnight. The piles of ashes from brush and grass and tree cuttings on the windward side where apparently somehow the fire had started. There was nothing. Absolutely nothing. No, oh, Dollar. I'm afraid it was just some crazy kid or a drunk in a passing car that flipped out a lighted cigarette. With this much wind, the whole place went up in a flash. No. I just hope he finds out about it and has brains enough to have a conscience that'll plague him for the rest of his life. Uh, I'm afraid that won't help this poor man and his wife and those two youngsters. Don't you worry about him, Johnny. Hmm? No, hi, Harry. Mr. Alderson. Hi, Chief. Well, the gun, it's happened again, hasn't it? Sure has. How did you find out about it? Well, one of my neighbors where I live in Moore Park. I guess he's been over here giving you boys a hand. Oh, I just got back from Hollywood where I'd gone to see a show at Grauman's Chinese and he stopped me at the front gate. Told me about it. Well, if he was so interested as to come all the way over here, maybe you better give me his name, Mr. Wallerson. Sure, it was old Timothy Hamlin. You know him, Chief. Yeah. He was here even before we got here. Huh. Oh, now, wait. If you think old Tim would do a thing like this. No, I wouldn't think so. Anyhow, Johnny, don't you worry about these people here. I'll put them up in a motel for the night at company expense and then pay them off in full first thing in the morning. Item six, ten dollars for a comfortable motel on Ventura Boulevard. After a late breakfast the next morning, I drove back to Harry's office and watched him pay off the unfortunate but grateful people who'd lost their home. Then I watched him accept application after application from people who now, after this latest fire, suddenly decided they'd better have insurance or add to what they already had. The people streamed in and out of there in droves. Finally, at about 1.30 p.m., Harry closed the door of his private office long enough for a quick sandwich. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awful that uh, um, they have to be scared into, into buying insurance this way, Johnny. But by golly, they need it. They know it now. We'll give it to them. They're a pretty scared lot. Main problem is to keep them from over-insuring, throwing their money away. More coffee? No, no thanks. But, um, I check pretty carefully before issuing the actual policies, you know. Are you and the chief find out anything? Well, it doesn't look so. Well, I sure hope you do. Well, not me, I'm afraid. Huh? Harry, I have to fly on back to Hartford. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Well, uh, but, but if somebody is setting these, uh, well, Johnny, all I can promise is I'll somehow, sometime, get to the bottom of it. Somebody better. <laughs> Item 7, $314, covers a lot of things. First of all, a weekly rate for me at the motel. Then a phone call to Pat Fuller at Universal Adjustment Bureau back in Hartford, a sort of clearing house for information on claims made to companies throughout the whole country. Then a while later, when he called me back... Why, well, yes, Johnny, your guess was right. Greater Southwest is the only company that's had to pay on fire losses out there in the Simi Valley lately, and nine or ten of them in a row. Okay, Pat. Thanks. But uh, what do you think it means, Johnny? Well, what I think, Pat... Yeah? I don't like... I'll see you. Uh... 
Item 7 also covers deposits on two more rental cars and a beat-up farm truck, so I never have to drive the same vehicle twice in succession. And it covers several changes of clothes, including the sort of stuff the local farmers wear and some hats. Also, a couple of the biggest tank-type fire extinguishers I could find. I kept them with me all the time. Then I started the longest, most careful tailing job I ever attempted. Why? Because I'd suddenly remembered an old phrase from my high school days from, believe it or not, my class in Latin. Cui bono. Who benefits? And how benefits? Not by burning down their own homes. As Harriet said, all the insurance money in the world couldn't completely make up for a loss. No, the one big beneficiary of all those fires was the man who collected a nice fat commission on the policies and all the nice new policies that he sold as a direct result of those fires. I followed Harry Wallison 24 hours a day, even slept in one of my rental cars parked out near his home. And then finally, one moonlit windy night, and thank the good Lord for that moon, when he slipped out, got into his car, and headed up into Simi Valley, I, with my lights off, was only a few hundred yards behind him. When he stopped, got out, and walked quietly over to a new little home with a lot of dried-out shrubbery at one side, I knew I'd guessed right. That's right. Uh, 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 listen, listen, Save Johnny. Save it, Harry. Here, you get that extinguisher going while I use this one. Jo Johnny, now... Uh, go on, Harry, use it. That dry stuff is going up fast. Go on. Uh, I suppose I might as well, huh? Yep, you might as well. How, how'd you know, Johnny? By remembering my Latin. to the whole dirty, rotten business. For my money, they can lock him up for life because if there's one thing I can't take, it's a crooked insurance man. I'm glad they're few and far between. Expense account total, including car mileage and the trip back to Hartford, 833.70. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, I'll be back with another exciting story. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstall, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Herb Duncan as Harry Walterson, Raymond Edward Johnson as Royal J. Harkins, Joseph Julian as the fire chief, and John Thomas as Pat Fuller. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Bill Gillian speaking. <laughs>